Hello, everybody. Welcome to June and you. The full reading with Tamara is over on my Rumble page. So please just follow the link below. But before following the link below, I did pull a spread on the month of June, just asking Spirit, asking uh, Magdalene what she or Spirit wanted to tell us about the month of June as a collective. And the overall feeling, which is the Page of Swords at the top there. Now, this is the Light Seekers deck, which is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite decks. I feel like this is the deck that I channel the best with. I have ordered a deck that's not um, holographic, that, so that going forward in the future, it'll be easy, easier to see on camera. But the Page of Swords at the top here... Um, this is a this can be a communication card, but it's also kind of like this bursting of new ideas, uh, creativity. It's a very positive card. And so if you look at the page of swords, it looks like the month of June is going to be a very, very positive month. Even though if you listen to uh, Emmy's reading as well as Tamara's reading, there is going to be a lot of action in June, but it looks like it's going to be kind of invigorating. Um, for us. Now, the second line here, we've got the Ten of Wands. The Ten of Wands is a card that kind of, it symbolizes like hard work and stress. And in the Light Seekers deck, you see her, you know, she looks like she's been traveling for a long time. She has her, her, her animal here has luggage strapped to him. She's carrying luggage, kind of the weary traveler. In the traditional uh, Rider weight deck, the Ten of Wands is the guy actually pushing a a bustle of, of wants. And so it signifies all this hard work that I feel like we've gone through. Of course, the line, the top line here does signify kind of the past, like what's already happened. But this coming into the six of wands, the six of wands is absolutely a victory card. And so those two cards together tell me that in the past, a lot of our hard work started to pay off. Now the three of swords here does can signify heartbreak, uh, deception, lies. And this makes sense to me. I know maybe it doesn't make sense in the spread to a lot of people, but to me, this makes sense, especially if I can reflect it into my own life, which I think all always, always the micro is a magnet is magnifying the macro and vice versa. So for years, we've been working for this victory. And just now towards the end of this battle, we are learning that there were infiltrators amongst us, people that I've trusted I now know are dark witches and 90% of the truth of community from what I understand is infiltrated. Um, some worse than others. Some are actually involved in rituals and some are just paid off by the cabal. So I think that's kind of what we're seeing here is that um, that kind of that shocked us, right? There was a shock here after our hard work and we found these victories that all of a sudden we learned there were infiltrators among the, among us. So the bottom line down here is kind of what's happening now presently. So we have the devil in reverse. Now, sometimes in like a, a basic reading, the devil card can just mean like obsessive thoughts. Um, it, it, it also is the Capricorn uh, zodiac sign. Not, not to say that Capricorns are devils. They're not. My sister and my brother-in-law are both Capricorns. And I love them so much. And Tamara is a Capricorn. But if you think about Capricorns for the most part, they're very business oriented. Like my sister is super grounded and she's very logical. Like she's super, super, super logical. She's not as ethereal as I am. She's very logical. She's very business minded. She's very much A, B, C, D. It all lines up, right? That's why she's a really good mom, in my opinion. That's what makes her a really, really good mother. Um, but when, when I'm looking at a spread like this for world events, especially knowing what we know now, I do read the devil as the literal devil. I do read this as the, the club, the controllers. And because he's in reverse in this, <laughs> in this spread, it's pretty good news for us. Now, next time is the queen of pentacles. The queen of pentacles can't be a very grounded woman, but she can also be a woman that does what she has to do. She knows what she's got to do to get the job done. And we know that this whole part of this whole great awakening is the rise of the divine feminine. So it's almost like after this heartbreak, the devil then came in reverse because the divine feminine, the true divine feminine, not the divine feminine of the infiltrators that claim to be, um, you know, divinators, uh, chart readers, all that kind of stuff. They're not, they're abusing 
those, those people are abusing divination in order to manipulate. Um, but the true divine feminines, we've done what we've had to do. We've uh, put our, our, our feet on the fire. We've joined the front lines of this, of this fight in order to defeat or help to defeat the controllers. And we know a lot of that, as you guys know, Magdalene is always around me. And I think she is literally leading that charge to return the balance to the divine feminine. And then the last card here is the fool, which the fool card is a really beautiful card. In my opinion, it just means change is coming. It means that, that there's change that's coming. Sometimes it can be an abrupt change. Like it shocks you. And I have been told myself personally that I actually have an abrupt change that's coming into my life very, very soon. Of course, these last couple of years for all of us has been a lot of change and we're learning to flow with that change. Um, so I think that's all good guys. But again, the overall feeling is the page of swords, which is fun, new, invigorating, fresh ideas. So let's go with that guys. And let's just, uh, let's keep our, our, uh, our eyes on the prize here. And just please, please, please remember guys, the, the controllers, those controllers, those dirty little controllers out there, they are hoping and praying that you don't do your homework. Okay. There's a lot of stuff going on out there about spiritualism. We know this is a spiritual war and the best thing that you can do for yourself is to educate yourself. Knowledge is power. Knowledge protects and knowledge is infinite. Let me say that again. That's the mantra. Knowledge is power. Knowledge protects and knowledge is infinite. I'm going to tell you guys right now, as a professional, this is my job outside of YouTube. Once again, I'm the only female in the state of Georgia who is authorized by my shawl in India to teach this. I have done massive research in my own studies. Meditation is not about visualization. Meditation is not about visualization. If you are meditating to visualize something, you are not meditating. Okay. Now visualizing something can be positive or negatively aspected. You have to remember that we live in a world of free will and consent. What I see people are doing is they're trying to do visualizations where you send healing to people on the planet. You cannot do that unless you have their consent. And remember there's a good light. There's a true light. And then there's the light of the darkness, the Luciferian light. It's that bling, bling light that Shanti from Aquarius Rising Africa calls it, right? So that fake light is what the dark players use, all right? So just be very, very careful from what it sounded like, from what I saw, it did appear to me that they are manipulating people into creating their own covens and then doing these particular quote unquote meditations for visualizations which screams to me spellcasting, screams to me the harness of energy. We need to be very, very, very careful. You should not be meditating more than 15 minutes. If you go beyond 15 minutes, you run the risk of hurting yourself mentally and emotionally. Um, I, I, can say, I can give people articles on this. And meditation itself is yoga chitta vritta narodaha. Yoga chitta vritti narodaha. It's about getting that one pointed mental focus. It's about calming the mind down. It's about releasing the thought patterns. All right. So that you come to a state of complete connection to God, not about visualizing guys. That's not meditation. All right. So I, I really, 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 really want each and every person to start doing your research before you get involved in something. Ignorance is not an excuse. Ignorance is not an excuse you still have free will. So if you do something out of quote unquote ignorance, you actually consented to doing it because you decided you made the decision not to research it and do it anyway. And so it's still going to be something you're going to have to work through. We're all in this together. We have the high probability of going into a positive timeline, but it's just a probability. They're banking on you not doing your research. We are the storm guys. This isn't about celebrities stepping in and saving the day. It's not about anybody outside of yourself stepping in and saving the day. You have to save yourself. The whole storm that Mr. T spoke about is you healing yourself. 
you healing yourself, you doing your own shadow work, you connecting back with the true God, you connecting back with your authentic self. It's not about waiting for some miraculous hidden army to come out and rescue you. No one's going to rescue you. You have to do it yourself. And that is fantastic news. That is fantastic news. You have that power. That's the plot twist. That's the plot twist. You are the storm. So please be mindful, guys, of everything. Research everything I say, too. Don't just take my word for it. Research everything I say, too. Study the Upanishads, study the Vedic texts, study the Bhagavad Gita, study the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, study these texts so that you have that knowledge. Again, knowledge is power, knowledge protects, and knowledge is infinite. All right, guys, go down to the description box below and you will find the link to Tamara's reading on June. She will be on the channel later this week for a full episode. Also, I believe I'll be doing a coffee chat tomorrow with uh, Catherine Edwards since we didn't get to do it last week. And then I will be back on with Aquarius Rising Africa at 10 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow, Monday morning, tomorrow morning to discuss Mithraism. If you miss the episode, it will be live. But if you miss it, you can always watch the replay. All right, guys, talk to you soon.